What's going on everybody? All right, so today's video is a little bit different from the usual videos. I'm gonna be traveling up to spend two days with Charlotte Worthington in the hope of giving you guys much more of an insight into who she is and how she got to where she is and where she's going with her life, etc. It's gonna be a little bit like an interview. I'm gonna sit her down and ask her questions to try to get to know her and show you guys who she is. I'd like to do these on many more inspirational people, not just BMX riders as such. Charlotte's just the first. In my opinion, Charlotte's an incredible person. She's managed to be successful in a sport that is completely male dominated or has been for many years. When I got into BMX, it was all about guys. It was BMX competitions for guys. It was lots of media of guys riding. There was sponsorship opportunities for guys. I had lots of support and imagine a girl coming into this male dominated world where they have no examples of other females that are out there doing it and for Charlotte she's had to come into this kind of world and just rely on her own motivation and her support to get out there and ride and 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 learn tricks and 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 go through injuries and all that kind of stuff and that's why she's an inspirational person and that's why I'm interviewing her today I've not done this before uh, the producer's kind of content, so bear with me. It's the first time for me, so I'm learning, but yeah, gonna give it a go. The other videos will continue to happen, so uh, yeah, here we go. <laughs> Shall I come in? Cheers, mate. What do you want? Um, if you're filming this, you're not putting this in. <laughs> <coughs> you're actually not putting it in. I will not let you. Hi, Baz. My name's Charlotte Worthington. How old were you when you started riding scooters and what was that like? I started riding scooters when I was probably like 13. I was pretty young. Going through high school, everyone thought I was so weird for riding a scooter. Like, no one got it. I got these weird nicknames like Scoots McGee. I didn't really get on with a lot of people from high school. Yeah, I rode scooters for like six years. Got kind of professional, if you want. I had like a sponsor, did a bit of touring around the UK. I was your typical scooter kid, for sure, with terrible style. <laughs> <laughs> you seem really proud of the fact you came from school. Not that you shouldn't be, but some people I know were definitely not proud, they would hide it, but I like the fact that you're, you're proud of it. I am proud of it because I made a lot of friends, I made a lot of connections, it like taught me a lot about people and kind of had some aspirations of what kind of person I wanted to be. And I know people at my high school that would call me stupid names and just like be idiots. I really didn't care because I just had such a different outlook to them. And I think that's the same with anyone from action sports. They have a totally different outlook on life. What made you fall in love with BMX? I always thought BMX was the coolest sport. I always thought it was so much more impressive. I used to always watch BMX videos more than scooter videos anyway. So I was already in love with it. I went through a bit of a transition in my life from being a teenager to getting a job, riding less and people changing and growing up at that age. I was a chef for like two years. It got pretty intense. I was doing like ridiculous hours. I kind of look back and think I'm not sure why I did that many hours. You get your first job and it's kind of like what society tells you is you you do loads of hours and you put loads of work in. You quit your hobbies and you don't have time for them. I knew when I made the switch from my scooter to my bike that I wanted to ride my bike for as long as possible just as a hobby <laughs> like because it was so fun. And then it was February last year in 2018 that Someone approached me from British Cycling and said, like, we kind of have this opportunity. We might be going ahead with putting a team together for the 2020 Olympics in Tokyo. It quickly kind of switched from work ridiculous hours to trying to tell my boss, like, I need as much time off as possible. Kind of came pretty obvious to me that the two couldn't work together. I'd been BMXing for like a year at that time. Baz hit me up with a little cheeky message on Insta, got in the DMs. And uh, <laughs> and yeah, he asked me to be on Tall Order and like that support was like massive. All the trips and everything, experiences since then, the year and a half is just a huge change. Everything has happened. I've traveled, I've got Tall Order behind me and then I've got British Cycling behind me. Within a week of quitting my job, I was on a plane to Japan for my first ever feast contest. That's another first thing that happened last year. I, I, 
had my first competition season. Got to travel all around the world, Japan, China, America, Canada, Spain, everywhere. And this all happened in like the half of the year, like the six months that's just gone by and I've traveled like half the world and I'm just, I'm pretty blown away. And it's something that if you'd asked me a year ago if that would have ever happened to me or if that was even sustainable and possible, I probably wouldn't have believed you. It's literally a dream come true. Every trip has just like been totally crazy to experience a new culture. I hadn't been out of the UK that much before any of this had happened, like a couple of times. One pretty amazing one was Portugal, given that it was with the Tall Order team. So the Olympic tricks, uh, trips are great, but they are professional and obviously you're going there for a competition. But the trip with Lisbon was like so fun. Riding that crazy spot, that's an experience that I definitely won't forget. Like, the trek to get there, I, wouldn't, I wasn't about to let that opportunity go, really. And then I had the support, support of all you guys, which definitely helps me, like, push into doing it. Breathe. You got it. You got it. Get it, Shaw. Yo! Oh, I mean, Blaze Queen. <laughs> <laughs> I want to get a bit looser. I was, like, so tucked up to, like, get, like stay on it. <laughs> oh, my God. It reminds you of what BMX is really. It's not just about competing, it's about like creativity and trying to figure out something. It just takes me back to why I really love the sport. It's also about enjoying what you do, especially with all your mates and your family. Uh, that's like the most important bit for me. That's the other thing with Charlotte as well, is that she is like a really well-rounded rider. She will ride near enough anything. Like she'll use the pegs or she'll like go fast at a quarter and an hour or she'll do something like low and like technical like she's she's really well rounded like she's killing it she's the best girl BMXer in this country do you feel like a woman on a trip or do you just feel like you're one of the <laughs> I think in all honesty my whole teenage onwards lifestyle I've always felt like one of the lads but I've always been better with banter and lad behaviour I've always had that sense of humour like some of the guys seem less comfortable than you because they're like, oh, this is new for me to hang around with a girl. Like, but for you, it's like, well, you've been doing this since you were 10 years old. Yeah. On scooter, so you've grown yeah. up with it. That's weird to me to think that the guys will be like weirded out hanging out with a girl. Riding a scooter, I've just always been in a male dominated environment. I moved out of my mum and dad's house up in Manchester where I had all my friends and I really didn't want to leave. The move was kind of tough, like the first couple of weeks, I just didn't really know what to do myself. The morning that I left, uh, my dad was like kind of upset, he was almost tearing up, just made me tear up. Uh, so I left all my friends and my family to move down here. Made that commitment to come down here on my own, a little bit scary, but basically the friends that I've got here are the people that I know at the skate park which is awesome, but at the same time, don't know anyone outside the skate park. You know, I've grown on them. I've, I've tried to show an interest in football to try and make a bond with them. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a Nando's in Corby. Stoked. <laughs> yeah, I've made quite a sacrifice. It was definitely quite a change, but I've done it because I absolutely love riding and there really isn't anywhere better, in my opinion, in the UK to really train at than Adrenaline Alley. If you're not riding, that's like, you're not doing anything. There's nothing else to do. This sacrifice is just part of the many sacrifices you have to take to reach the top, as they say. <laughs> yeah, the whole point of it was to be good for my riding. Being here is so much better for my riding. I'd never stepped foot into a gym until 2018, halfway through 2018. At British Cycling, we've got a nutritionist, who advises us on, on all the food. Uh, we've got also a psychologist, a gym instructor. Being here, uh, I've learned so much about a healthier lifestyle. It helps me focus being here. It totally helps me focus. It definitely helps me progress with tricks when, I, when I'm able to plan around a session like that. I've got contests coming up this year. We're coming into the new season, which starts in like spring. I try and be in the skate park as much as my body will let me without getting absolutely exhausted. Uh, so that's probably four, max five times a week. When I'm there, I kind of set myself little goals, uh, little trick goals. 
Uh, I work towards them. I tend to change my trick goals like every week. It's motivating to um, to achieve getting the trick. I've spent loads of time in the foam pit just messing about with new stuff. Keeps it fun, keeps it fresh. My favourite trick to watch Charlotte do is a tail. Just from the way that she like, she kicks the bike and then she catches on the pedals and stuff. Like it's sick. Like I really like that. Thankfully, moving with moving to Corby, uh, I've. I'm catching up and I'm getting back on top of my riding, trying new tricks. I do have some real big goals and it's kind of scary to have big goals like that and believe in them. The main goal within the next kind of two years is Tokyo 2020. Uh, to get to the Olympics themselves, there's, there's only seven or eight spots. Um, so it's, it's going to be a, a tough, long road to get there, but I think we'll get there. And then once we're at 2020, we'll be pushing for that top spot for sure. As far as earning from BMX goes, like after everything that I've heard, I know just how lucky I am to actually get any kind of salary out of BMX. It's definitely not your normal uh, career for anyone, let alone like a girl. So I would definitely wouldn't say I have like spare cash to splash. <laughs> I'm pretty happy with, with what I've got. It's not like super amazing or comfortable. It's, it's enough. What about boyfriends and stuff? Have you got a boyfriend? <laughs> I do not have a boyfriend. Sorry to everyone who thinks that me and Ollie are going out. Me and Ollie aren't going out. <laughs> Even though we'd be the perfect couple. We all know this. Uh, no, I, I had a boyfriend, kind of. Just things changed, people changed. Ever since then, I just really don't have an interest in kind of having a boyfriend. That might sound like really selfish or whatever, but I'm just like really focused on myself right now. I just want to make sure I'm the best that I can be. I really don't need a man in my life. <laughs> Strong, independent woman and that. <laughs> Relationships can get a bit messy. Mine got a bit messy. <laughs> on my first ever feast trip, I was like the biggest fangirl ever. Like I was going around uh, Japan with Jamie. I was just like, oh my God, there's there's so and so, there's Nick Bruce, oh, there's there's Brandon Lupas, and like there's Kyle Baldock, and oh, these people I've just seen on the internet so much, and just like they've always blown my mind, and to actually see them in person, I was just like gobsmacked. And it's because we've all gone to the events, we've all spent like two weeks with each other at a time throughout the year, so we kind of like know each other, and I'm kind of friends with these people now, so it's kind of blown my mind a bit. So years ago, like the last time I went to NAS, which is like one of the biggest BMX competitions in the UK, and this is how much the world has changed. For the girls, the only thing there was was a wet t-shirt competition. Well, they didn't have a riding contest. They, there was nothing for the girls. No way. And, and a massive crowd of people that crowded around and watched this wet t-shirt competition. And that is a joke, isn't it? Yeah, it's like, that's like it's, insane. It's like literally insane, like you can't believe that. <laughs> Fast forward probably maybe five years. Nowadays there's like big competitions with good prize money for the girls. Like, I just can't believe that. Vans are trying to push girls contests so much that like at their finals in the US Open, they have equal prize money. So it's like 12 grand for first place, which is the same as the guys. So mm. that's, that's insane. How that's how it should be. Yeah, I, mean, I can't believe that. <laughs> I was thinking about what support girls have had over the years. And I've never seen no. a girl on the front cover of a magazine. I've never seen a girl have an interview in one of the big videos, like props. Hardly any other girl, girls got sponsored. There was hardly any girls' contest. I tried to imagine what that would be like. Like when I got into BMX, there was magazines with lots of guy interviews and guys on the cover and uh, competitions and sponsorship opportunities and all my friends were getting sponsored. Yeah. You start to realize like, oh my God, like, like no wonder girls haven't got into it. Like, yeah, definitely we're seeing other girls do, like out there doing it makes you believe it can happen. Like there's yeah. definitely girls that'll look at all the girls at Feast and think, wow, they are traveling the world and competing. And But at the same time, um, I, know, I know it's hard, but when I was like a scooter kid, I didn't really see myself as just like a, like a girl on the sidelines. No, no. You, that, I still never have, like, I still no, don't. Like. You're just one of us when you're with us. Guys have had decades and decades and decades of support via sponsorship, magazine, media, um, competitions. I think now that the girls are getting that, I think the progression in the next five to 10 years is gonna oh, shock gonna a lot of people. Crazy. I think girls are gonna be doing stuff that most guys can't do within a few years. 
yeah the roads of bmx has like been laid out now by the guys as well like mm. they can see it's these tricks are possible and there really isn't a difference between you being a girl rider and you being a boy rider like you could argue the body frame etc but it's only psychological yeah in my opinion, in my opinion the only totally. reason girls aren't as good at the moment is because they haven't had decades of support i think now that they're getting support they're going to progress at an alarming rate and yeah they'll be as good as the guys in five to five years time i think yeah i think that's that's like a fact yeah. as you said mentally it's just like that belief yeah it's having the belief I, I, that's what i totally believe ollie'd be roasting me right now he's <laughs> so much stupid to say Oh, I'm a woman in the right place now. I've got the right kind of cool stuff. You're where you belong now. <laughs> it's a real film camera. I do like photography outside of uh, like riding. I used to, I did it at college, so I used to be in, into it way more like a hobby. Uh, when I started working, I kind of lost touch of it a bit. Getting back on it. Got another film developed. A little expensive hobby. Paying for film. Yeah, developed. I'm, I'm not such a nerd. I'm like the opposite of a nerd. <laughs> I'm actually, yeah, I'm a creative nerd. Anything that's creative, photography and filming. You're into. I'm into, yeah. I love filming. People are gonna think they're mine. They're really not. For now, I porridge sometimes as well. Today's session, I've strained a, a muscle in my wrist. I don't know how. I think it's because I had a week off eating too much chocolate and then. Came back too strong, <laughs> too much fire. As long as I don't land flat, my wrist isn't gonna hurt. <laughs> so that's an incentive to not land flat. I'd like to ride the scooter room, so I've not rode that for ages. On your scooter or on your bike? On my bike. <laughs> <laughs> Through injuries, I've learned a lot more about my body and why this helps. Uh, but this is just like a routine I looked up on YouTube as well. It's just like a full body roller routine and I really liked it, it was like 20 minutes. So. You'd like, comment and subscribe. <laughs> to what some random woman's YouTube account. Again, I learned a lot about how all your muscles depend on each other. Strengthening my calf will help reduce the risk of me rolling my ankles in a sense because my other muscles are stronger to support it. Three double downwards to bar. A couple of Love Island people. A couple, <laughs> of, a couple of foot boys. A couple of fit boys. <laughs> Yeah, there's not even any scoot riders on here. All BMXers, Nigel Houston. Oh, I follow Scoot Review. <laughs> Just for the bants. It's one of the few things I have going for me that makes me girly is that I like pink. I didn't used to like pink, now I like pink. <laughs> I mean, I mean, give the situation, I probably would. <laughs> <laughs> Dan Sensen has two fans. One male, one female. He has a third fan. Oh yeah, I, I like him too. Who doesn't? Yeah, I mean... He's a, he's, a, he's a gorgeous man. I mean, yeah, just look at that chin. I know you would, Baz. He's just too cool, <laughs> look at him. Like, everything about that photo is just cool. He's got so much stuff, he's just giving it away. Just what a nice guy. What a nice guy. He is actually really nice. What a, a guy. Look at that image. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> look at them arms. This is just a heartbreak it's just like, image. This is going to be on Vital BMX now. Charlotte. Quote. What Charlotte Worthington probably would. <laughs> Quote. Charlotte Worthington probably would. Dennis Anderson. <laughs> Alex is gorgeous. Is he? Yeah. Is he your idea of, of a good looking fella? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's so good looking. Drop him a DM. I'm not dropping him a DM. <laughs> I've met him in person tons of times. You guys saw the feast. Hi, Alex. Oh, hi, Alex. Oh, you don't speak much English. Oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> People I look up to a lot. I'll just like, I just can't stop asking questions. <laughs> it's probably the same with Jamie Bestwick as well. They've got that lifestyle that I want to live and I want to be successful, and I think they're really successful, so. Yeah, so I'm just a big old BMX nerd. If I'm gonna get pumped to ride, I'm struggling with the inspiration, I'll watch like Alex or I'll, I love the Harry Mania videos. So I'm secretly just a fangirl like that. <laughs> I just like all the kind of nostalgic films. Is this one? Yeah, have you seen this before? You are gonna hate me because obviously I have not seen this before and it's seven years old. Prepare yourself for some incredible bike bike riding. Okay. I mean, that was sick. That was pretty sick. What? That was insane. 
<laughs> I've never seen Road Fools. <laughs> Van Herman hates me. You wouldn't see that at a feast nowadays. That's <laughs> what I think of that. <laughs> These jumps are the size of like Nitro Circus. That's cool. Yeah, my fantastic whip. It's German. German, German whip. The polo. The polo. My mum's polo. <laughs> We are in the, ch I was going to call you Chaz, but your name's not Chaz, is it? The Chazmobile. We're in the, yeah, we're <laughs> in the Chazmobile, the Charlotte Mobile, heading towards her local shred ground, Corby Skate Park. And it's going to be a fun little session for them. I can't ride, I've got a broken ankle. Well, not broken, but I've got a swollen ankle at the moment. So yeah, this is part of Charlotte's interview. And um, I don't know if I'm going to put this in or not, but if I do, Interview is going well so far. We've got some good stuff. Now for the riding, so here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Savage corner. You live in a nice little area though. Yeah. Ah! Stuck on your camera bag. God damn it, Baz. <laughs> that was not a smooth exit. The beast. The steed. Iron up the uh, the rails that I've not hit for quite some time. You got it. I have got it. It's just been a little while since I've done some street manoeuvres. Yeah, I'll send it. You got a bad wrist, and she's. I shouldn't say that. I don't want to. Say it. Okay. You got it. A few bitch run ups. In all honesty. It's all good. Right. I just want it over and done with. You got it. You got it. Do it for yourself. <laughs> Every time I think I'm gonna do it and I finish out. Oh my god, Charlotte. <laughs> Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. I've had a pass over. I'm gonna get all the way down. You got it. You're right. 